Welcome back. We are going to do what is not the nicest, prettiest part of making the handle, but this is in keeping with homesteading. We're going to be extracting sinew from some cow legs that I picked up at the local butcher shop. This is a non-edible part of the cow. We're not wasting any meat or any consumables here. And this is very much in, in keeping with the homesteading principle of using everything but the oink, so to speak. The old saying that when you butcher a pig, you use everything but the oink to honor the life that you have taken. And even if you are not a carnivore, even if you're not a meat eater, a vegetarian, what we are doing here today is making use of a piece of the animal that was going to be thrown onto the scrap pile. And we're going to put that to good use. What, what we're going to do in this clip is simply extract the sinew from the leg and get it ready to dry. It's a little messy. It's not the prettiest, cleanest part of the process, but as we go forward, you will see that we will get nice, pristine, clean white sinew at the end of the day. So if you would direct the camera down, I have a couple of beef legs here. And again, I just went to the local kitty. Okay, no, don't, you don't want that. <laughs> I just went to the local butcher shop and told them what I was doing and asked if they had any legs. And they gave me a really funny look. Why do you want that? Because nobody wants this, right? But this is a throwaway part, okay? It's just the feet. Now, what we want to get out is a nice long strip of sinew that still has some membrane on it. When this dries and we process this by, by pounding and shredding the fibers, mm -hmm. the all of this sinew and that all of the sinew, all of this membrane and nastiness is gonna go away. Okay, so you don't need to worry about this. You do want something to dry it on, and this is another good place to again practice our zero waste principles and reuse some of these styrofoam trays that food often comes in because you don't really want to dry this on your wife's good china. Mm, no. It's a good way it's a good way to cause some stress in the household. Okay. So to get this sinew out is this leg in frame? Yes. One? Okay. To get the sinew out, the sinew runs right here. This is kind of like the hamstring, right at the base of your leg. Right here. We don't want to cut directly into it. We want to get through the hide. So I'm going to come in and switch sides on you here a little bit. Just I'm ready. And I'm going to come in. Hold on. Get in frame. The camera. Okay. There we go. Is it in frame? Yep. Okay, good. Sorry, guys. I'll tilt it a little <laughs> bit this way. I'm going to start right here at the base of the dew claw and cut along the skin, just along the bone, trying to avoid this patch right here because that's where the actual good sinew is. So. Just make some scoring cuts down along. Get all the way through the hide. We're not trying to save anything here. I mean, aside from the obvious sinew. Yes, but. aside from the obvious sinew. <laughs> so this doesn't have to be a pretty skinning job. I and know you that's do just wanna... water splashing in my mouth, but... <laughs> and you do want to wear uh, not so good clothes. You definitely want to wear this. not so good clothes. You want to wear truly terrible clothes. And for something like this, where these have been in manure, you don't know how long. This is not a food grade product. You don't know how long these have been sitting in the butcher's pile when you get something like this. So this is definitely a very good opportunity to wear some disposable gloves. Yeah. Okay. So there's our start. Now I'm going to cut across below the dew claw, being careful not to score too deeply, because again, I'm after the sinew. Now you're pretty, you're actually pretty safe doing this. I'll show you why once I get in here. This kitty is very interested in what we are doing. Okay, you make me sneeze. You have to go down. <laughs> I love our cats. But I'm Guest starring Creamsicle the cat. Yes. Okay. 
So now I've opened up a window into this. Now the last cut I need to make is right in between these two dew claws. Okay. There is a tradition if you're working with deer or elk of skinning these out and making things that show the dew claws on them, but we're not doing that today. Okay, now this big white trunk here, you see, this is our sinew. This is where this comes in, right there. Mm. But it's contained within a sheath of really hard material that's not useful for anything. And this is why I said you, you can kind of get away with murder when you're cutting these out, because that'll protect your actual sinew. We want to now go find the bone, the base of the bones right there. Actually, the, I, I cut above the sheath. The sheath is very, very hard. <clears throat> and find that, get through to both sides, and kind of cut under the sinew in both directions. Fingers are cold. This is not ideal weather for this. <laughs> Okay, we want to get under that. But we got the bones when we got the bones. We so. got the bones when we got the bones. This is also one of the reasons why you want like a small, small knife. Yes, you, yeah. Again, you won't ever, watch my uh, carving tools video. I talk about small knives a lot. You want small knives for most of your work. Unless you're actually making cuts of meat, then you want a proper butcher knife. But for everything else, you want small knives. Now I'm going to free this. This is connected here, and it's kind of Y-shaped, so there's a connection right underneath each dew claw, which is why I freed that. So we're just going to come back to, oh, about there. Let me cut this up a little bit more. Okay. Now, the sinew itself is really hard to cut. Just got to get it free. Now, I do recommend, if you're going to work with this, get cow. You're going to avoid, especially if you're going to be selling something. Okay. Get back. Oh, into. I could have done that. I, I just kind of did this the hard way and messed up me. That's okay. Just to get plenty of nice sinew out of it. I lost a little chunk there. Mm. It's hard to see where it was coming through the the connection point. We'll still get nice long, nice long strings. Okay. Get cow, especially if you're going to sell anything. Some states are real cool about using um, deer and elk products as long as it was really, as long as it was legally taken. Some states are not, and I am not a lawyer to tell you which ones are which. To get cow, avoid the problem. Now again, one of these strings goes up underneath each of those, so I'm going to cut to free those. Also, cow is about the biggest chunk of sinew that you're going to get off any critter here in North America. <coughs> Save maybe bison, but good luck with that. There are bison herds that are farmed out west. Oh, but... and some that are some that are farmed in the east, but you'll find a whole lot more cow legs than you will bison yeah, legs. Yeah, they're not very uh, prevalent. Okay. Getting through the sheath. Okay. So, there is our chunk of sinew still partially housed in the sheath. Now, you can take the sheath off now, or you can leave it on and it will come off when in the next step of processing. Um, I do want to get... Let me bring this up close. You can see 
This is the sinew you want. Is it a frame? There we go. Okay. Yeah. This is the sinew you want. That's the protective sheath. That's no good. This is what we're gonna actually use. Okay. So, I am going to... Carefully. Yeah, I'm not gonna be too persnickety about this because my fingers are very, very cold and I very, very much do not want to cut through these surgical gloves. Mm. That's going to be a dirty wound. And we don't want to go to the hospital right now. No, we don't. So I'm just going to carefully cut through the sheath. If this was deer or something like that, I'd probably just dry it and get rid of it in the next processing step. Because there's so much here, I don't want it to go rancid while it's drying. So I'm going to be a little bit cleaner in terms of fleshing these out. just go in a couple different directions. Hmm. This piece has got a lot of membrane on it for so it didn't come very clean for whatever reason. Okay, that is not sinew, that is an artery. We don't want that. just give us an extra chance to go rancid and drying. So basically you're cutting off anything that has like a lot of blood in it. Yes, exactly. Okay. And the sheath there is as hard as the sinew. Okay. So there we go. That's clean enough. There's still a little bit of membrane on there. You can, this is that Y junction I was talking about. You can come in between those and just trim some of that out. Working on an old table here. Out to doors. There we go. And there's the piece of sinew that we want. Okay, so now we have another one. This one was one that was cut really short because the butcher just kind of cut that cannon bone in half. Mm. So I didn't get a, a, a real great chunk out of that one leg, but still, it's um, I'll process it. I'll use it. You can make hide glue out of that too. So still worth still worth keeping. And now this is done. There's a bone for your puppy. If you have a puppy to chew on bones. Or these are this this cannon bone is the is really one of the thickest, biggest, hardest bones in an <laughs> ungulate. So if you're interested in scrimshaw or bone carving or anything like that, you can just bury these in the ground for a year, come back, dig them up, and you'll have some material to work on that. So there's still useful craft material in there if you're into those those sorts of things. But what we're talking about is 
knife handles and the sinew that has been harvested so that will be the end of this clip and I will see you back in several days for me while this dries but mere seconds for you and you'll see the next step in processing okay friend <laughs> okay it's time to start processing our sinew the this took quite a while to dry we have a friend visiting this took don't eat the sinew this took quite a while to dry because it's a lot fatter than some other types you do need to make sure that you turn it a little bit as it's drying if it sticks against the plastic or against another piece it'll get a little scuzzy right at that intersection but it dries quite nice it almost feels like plastic when it's dry you can tell it's dry because the whole thing's translucent <laughs> Um, <laughs> we have uh, interference in today's video. Now, this is the sinew from four deer legs. Sorry, four cow legs. Compared to this little handful is the sinew from three deer legs. You can see advantage, cow. It's the same work to get it out of a deer leg or an elk leg as it is a cow leg, so you might as well go and... and save your effort it's all the same stuff now to process this we need our sinew we need a clobber knocker and we need a knocker on which to clobber and all you do is you take it remember I, when we pulled it out I said this has some of the sheath attached that'll come off this is where it's going to come off you just pound it okay you beat the stuffings out of it until it starts to shred okay and as it shreds we want to pull the fibers apart separate that sheath from the fibers separate the fibers from each other and yes this is very abusive but it is the process that might just be mostly sheath. Nope, that's shredding into fibers. Okay. And what we're going to want to do is get this, you see how this is opening up into a network, a, a kind of a weave there? We're going to want to pound this enough that we can get out these individual little pieces like that. So you just keep pounding, you keep ripping, you keep tearing. It's quite a bit of work. There's nothing delicate about it. And if it rips into fibers, it's good sinew. If it doesn't, it was junk sheath. Okay? And you can see this gets... The, the initial process of getting these out of the legs was rather unappealing but at this stage that's just almost a fabric okay so we proceed with this until this whole batch has been shredded and then we will talk about twisting it into a sinew rope and how to go about that little bit of the process okay okay so we have pounded up the sinew and you can see it goes from that you know kind of unappealing form it originally was in into this sort of gauze-like material. Now it won't completely separate, but you can see that there is sort of a, a spread felt kind of weave to it. Okay. The, ne the next stage we want to do here is we want to pull these apart into individual strings. Okay. Because what we want to go to is a rope, like this one that I made here. You can see this is, oh, about fingertip to opposite shoulder there. If I just hold in my fingertips, probably not all in frame, to my opposite mm -hmm. shoulder. And why that long? Well, because I compared it to my prototype. We're going to make this rope, and this is going to be wrapped around. And it will be wrapped wet, and then will shrink 
to a, a tight, translucent, even thickness wrapping. So I did a, a test run on this initial rope around the prototype to kind of gauge how much I need. And it's a couple additions extra. So still looks a little bit messy. This will be cleaned up later in, in future steps. Okay? But what we want to do is we want to pull this into pieces that are fine enough that we can do a reverse twist cordage using them. So we just shred it, fingers, and if you get a thick spot that refuses to shred, well, no big deal. You just take that back out and hammer on it some more. These thicker leg sinews do have a tendency to get some thicker spots that are a little bit more recalcitrant. Also, if you're having trouble getting it to spread out and felt out nice, you can always get a hammer that has a bit of a peen on it and work it with a cross peen or a ball peen to just get into right where you want. Okay. Of course, if you were doing this in a pre-metallurgical society anywhere in the world. You would be doing it with a hammer stone, setting the short piece of the side. It, you will get some short pieces, which has a roundness and would act as a peen just automatically. Okay. Um, now those short pieces, these are no good for twisting into the rope. But this is the traditional material for making hide glue. So if you set these aside and want to make actual, legit, traditional hide glue, you can take those, put them in a double boiler for about 12 hours, making sure that you keep adding water as you go, okay, and that it never gets too harsh of a boil. It takes a day to two days to cook these down, but you will gradually cook all the gelatin out. The other way you can make a hide glue is to go to the grocery store and buy a packet of unflavored gelatin and use that for your hide glue. Okay? It is every bit as strong, if not stronger, than the best of the traditionally made hide glues. So, Because that's all hide glue is, is gelatin. So we'll, we'll just work with this. I'm not going to make a whole rope on camera. It takes quite a while. But I will show you how to start it and how to continue it, and then it's just a function of repetitively continuing it until you have the length that you need. So to start it, we need to make a little bundle, and we want to make a little bundle with uneven ends. Okay, so we want to kind of arrange these so that they're not all the same length. We'll put in the middle. Let's get a fourth one right in the middle there. Now once you have that, we're just going to twist about the middle third of this into a nice tight twist and then allow it to double on itself and kind of encourage it to, to twist up there. You're always going to have a twisted end, like that's the twisted end where I started this one, and you're going to have a knotted end. This is the, the termination. This was the start, that was the finish. Okay. Now split it back out into halves. Okay. And now to move up another section on this, I'm going to do a reverse twist. There's two ways to make cordage, reverse twist and leg roll. Okay. Leg roll is the, mo is the fastest and most efficient. But to do a leg roll twist, you really need long fibers. And these just are not long enough to efficiently do a leg roll. So I'm gonna, I do this all the way along with, with reverse twist. Okay. Now, if you can get back sinew, some people call it the silver skin on the back of a, um, the, the back loin, which is either side of the spine right against this, the skin. Okay. 
that little that little strip of meat uh, has a little silvery membrane across the top. That membrane is sinew. That is the it's the the sinew you get from those is the whole length of the animal. So if you can get your hands on that kind of sinew, then it's long enough to leg roll. Okay. And if I wanted to do something where I needed a very clean rope like a bowstring, I would absolutely make a point to find back sinew for that. It's also the best for sewing because you have that length of thread. Okay? But here, this doesn't have to be fancy sinew. This will get cleaned up and those ends snipped off and a lot of them will just get wrapped under and whatever doesn't get wrapped under will get snipped off and it will be a nice clean surface till we're done. Okay? So since we have the shorter material, we're going to do the reverse twist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch it here then I'm going to roll my fingers away from me a half turn. And then I will pass that under and the untwisted over toward me. Okay? So I'm going to twist this one, and then that will go down and under and the untwisted up and over. And then I will repeat the process. Okay? So I'm going to twist this that way and then fold that up. Okay? And then re return my, my thumb and forefinger to the pin. Twist away, roll up. Twist away, roll up. Okay? Twist away, roll up. Okay? And every time I'm just advancing like a little bit of a half of a coil here. Now I'm getting close to the end of my first strand, so I'm going to add another strand on the bottom. And this is why your rope ends up a little bit messy, because I need to be able to hold the end of that strand in my pinch. That's why you see all these little ends sticking out. Okay. So twist away, roll up. Okay. I need to add another strand into this one. Again, hold it in the pinch, twist away, roll up. And you really have to have a firm grip on it here while you're first starting. Okay? Now you can see there's the ends that I just added in. Okay? Now I'm going to add another one right off the bat here. Because I'm getting close to needing to add one here and I don't want to have too many joints where they're both at the same spot. Twist away. Roll up. And I need to add another one there anyway. Twist away, roll up. Twist away, roll up. Okay. Keep building out, maintain your thickness. Twist away. You don't want to get real thick and thin spots. Okay, you want to try and maintain it. I, I find with this shorter stuff that my ends where I start are always going to get a little bit lumpy. But again, this is going to, this is about a quarter inch thick. But when this shrinks down, when we wet it, wrap it wet, stretch it as we're wrapping it wet, and then it shrinks down onto the handle, it's going to lose most of this width and shrink relatively flat, so that won't be a problem. But still, we don't we don't want to have any more of that than absolutely necessary. Um, just need a little piece in here. I'll go ahead and use him. Twist away, roll up. I'm on the other end. Twist away, roll up. And the better you do at staggering your work pieces at the beginning of this process, the easier it is to maintain your thickness as you go along. Twist away, roll up. Twist away, roll up. And the longer your sinew, the easier it is to get that, that stagger. Because right? you need a section that long in order to do that initial twist. And you can see the material I'm working with, right, isn't much longer than the section I need. So, so I kind of 
ends up with a thin spot here and then a fat spot, and then we even out as we move down the rope. Okay. Add another piece in here. Starting to thin a little bit. Twist away. Roll up. Twist away. Roll up. Okay. Now before I get to all of these blunt ends all at once, add another piece. This piece kind of tapers a little bit too, so it won't give me too much of a fat end there. That's a good one to use in that juncture. Twist away, roll up. Twist away, roll up. Okay? You can see what we're doing. Now, again, we are going to be wrapping this wet and stretched. So a lot of this will end up squished against the handle. And anything that sticks out, I'll come back with the nail clippers after it's all wrapped and snip off those ends. Then it'll be a nice, it'll be a nice looking wrap. Okay. So you don't have to worry about it, but we will keep going with our nice long, and you can see we're getting a pretty nice white clean rope. Okay. So I need to rip up some sinew, but I'm not, this, the rest of this is just um, repetitive. Okay. So we will sign off on this stage and I will make all of my ropes and the next thing we show will be how we um, work with this, with this material once all of the ropes are finished for all of the plates that we're working on. If you're enjoying this so far, this would be a great time to go ahead and hit the like button so that this, the video series can get out to others.